Okay, so what's up there guys and welcome back to Dig It Detecting. Welcome also back to the amazing old school site, basically where I want to be spending as much time as I can lately, especially while the grass is nice and low. So what we've done today too, we have the secret weapon. We have the Equinox 800. It has been sitting there basically having a rest for the last month inside. And as you'll have seen, we've been running the Vanquish 540, the Equinox 600. We are still yet to get to the Vanquish 440. Uh, basically we will be carrying that theme on uh, through to next month though and basically sharing and showing uh, different detectors. So what I wanted to do today though uh, is I really wanted, uh, you know, you would have seen my last few videos here, all the stuff coming out uh, using the Equinox 600 and the Vanquish 540 that Zave's got today. What I really wanted to do though uh, is bring out the Equinox 800. I have spent thousands of hours on this machine uh, so I know it like uh, uh, I know it like the back of my hand. So basically basically come out and uh, sort of run over the ground that we've run over already. And we're also going to be doing a little bit out the front where we have not been uh, detecting at all yet. So uh, pretty much untouched ground out the front there. I'm basically uh, running over this area out the back here though and trying to pick up and hit on any signals that we may have missed. We have not done as much up this end of the uh, the cricket pits just yet. Uh, mo most of our time, our focus has been spent up this end where Xavier is heading now. So where we snagged those two wonderful old flies so that's what we're going to do today. We have a lot of a lot of ground to cover. Uh, we have not done any up the front there either. Uh, around the sports sheds here too. Uh, and as I said, we're going to try and make our way out the front. Uh, we've got the sand pit, uh, the playground, and right in front of the school building, so where the teachers used to park their cars. So very, very special stuff. And hopefully we can have some great success running that Equinox 800. So let's see how we go. Rightio, so let's get him flicked on. Uh, let's see if it still works. I said it has not been turned on in the past month. I cannot wait to hear uh, those tones too. Uh, some will know uh, how I have my Equinox 800 set up. And uh, basically uh, those tones with my Equinox 800 coin settings, uh, those tones sing out nice and loud. Well, let's have a look what we're doing here. At 24, 25, we'll bump the sensitivity right up. We're in park one mode there. We're gonna flick through, uh, just give you a quick run through. Uh, we will knock that back down and do another noise cancel in a second. It probably won't matter anyway. It's going to change itself anyway. Ground balance zero, volume, we better turn him up. Uh, threshold to zero, target tone on five, exactly where I like it to be. Uh, just the five tones, easy tones to uh, listen to. And we're going to be digging from 18 through to 40. I'm still cherry picking this site. I still have not finished yet. Uh, cherry picking so basically 18 to 40 we will be coming back and digging all those lower tones out at a later date and uh, I'm sure uh, some good items coming out with it so recovery speed I'm going to drop down to six it's not a very trashy area at all and uh, iron bias on zero there so holding the settings button going back to the recovery speed and hitting the pinpoint button we'll go back to the main menu and now we are good to stand up and uh, basically do a quick noise cancel so all these settings are pretty much preset on my detector I don't really have to do too much so we had the sensitivity on 25 you can see a few little chirpy uh, bits of E and my coming through we might uh, turn him around to the house there and where probably most of our source of EMI is coming from uh, and basically whoops we better run a noise cancel hopefully run a little bit quieter after that and he's pretty good he's pretty good we might, I was gonna say we might even have to drop that sensitivity down we do have him on 25 max uh, but that's okay that's okay there's not too many uh, little uh, AMI interference signals coming through so we can live with that and uh, let's get going first little target there a uh, quite a sketchy one too and he's just coming in at a double signal there slightly so we're gonna give him a dig and start off with this guy Hopefully our first coin uh, being a silver. There is definitely something there. It's pinpointing quite a nice little area. So let's give him a dig. He's probably just a, a very deep a little thrippence there. I'll tell you what, it's already starting to warm up too. What I'm gonna do uh, today too, uh, you would have seen in uh, round three, uh, detecting at this site, uh, we basically uh, just sort of flick the camera on 
and left it running, left it rolling for quite a way, quite a while. It turned out actually, it turned out to be a one hour and 30 odd minute video. So uh, quite a long one at that. I think one of my longest videos I've ever made. So I really hope you enjoyed too. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna be doing though, is just um, running that camera for a little bit longer there today and trying not to edit out as much. I had uh, some great feedback from a lot of people saying they really enjoyed it. So that's what I'll try and do. Try and leave it running try and show you a little bit more the reality of it all so hmm what is going on with this target we're going to get down a bit further because you may be quite a deep one hopefully we're not hitting anything here all those crunches every time i slam the shovel in i think it was glass in there too there was too look at that that's what we're crunching on Bits of glass. So we may be chasing a bottle top here. Okay, we've got something on the side there. We better open him up that way. Let's see, we may be chasing a bit of rubbish or a bit of rust. Generally, if it leads you off one way, if you're pretty, uh, pretty onto your pinpointing, you know, if you uh, can dig straight down onto your target, and uh, you find it's leading you off in one direction, generally it's going to be a beast, a bit of rust. Like this guy is going to be here, so I'm pretty certain of that now. Must have been dumping a bit of the ash and a bit of rubbish. There he is. A bit of the ash and a bit of the rubbish are just out the back here, so not very far away from the school at all. Just chunks of rust in there. You can see that bit there. That's what's sending the pinpointer off. Whoop. It's going a bit haywire. Just chunks of rust, so falsing on a rusty item there. So we were fixating on a target and uh, making it into a target. Just like last week, I was explaining uh, the more you can uh, swing over a target, uh, the more it might actually fixate on that target at uh, being rust. I probably should have checked that hole a little bit better with the horseshoe button. Uh, fixating on that target though and turning it into a good sounding target. So I knew it was a little bit sketchy to begin with. Probably one that we shouldn't have dug. Uh, that's okay. I'll stand up and uh, we'll keep you rolling. Let's see if we can't find something better. As I said, we are going to try and capture a little bit more uh, this video especially so there you go it's gone and we're hitting on the shovel or something there let's move away from that one find something better Still just zigzagging this site too. Not really uh, gritting as such just yet. We'll get to that another time. I said when I come out and dig all those lower signals out. There's our next one. And listen to that, quite a great signal. 31, 33, 34. That is ideally going to be a silver coin. Let's grab that shovel. We just sort of walked around in a big circle until we found that target. So awesome stuff. Let's lift, uh, lift that coil up. Let's give him a dig. He was somewhere about there. I'm sure we'll find him with the pinpointer anyway. As long as we're in a close proximity of where we need to be. Xavier's over there beeping away. Sort of said to him he hasn't been here for a couple of a couple of visits the last two rounds. So I sort of said to him uh, what's been going on and where the coins have been coming out from. I told him that I found the 1942 Florin over there within the first 10 minutes of round two hunting here. And uh, finishing off for round three had just the other week with young Dominic and we found the other 1942 had just over there. So. What a way to finish off the video too. That was quite an amazing day. So, and uh, as I said, it was quite a long video. A great one of that though. There he is. We've got him fixated in the hole. There's something I want to do a bit more too. Uh, 
is as I said there last week, start getting on that GoPro and uh, taking time out to learn it, understand it. So it's a bit hard though, like between work, kids, life, everything like that going on. Uh, and then, you know, not only that, uh, I do put out a video every week already. So it is a bit hard to, uh... <gasps> oh dear. It is a bit hard sometimes uh, to get the time to just play around and uh, try new things, especially with that GoPro. Something I'll get to soon. Look at that, would we? We have our first coin and our first silver coin. You've seen it all happen too as we've been wandering around and we, uh, we also dug that rusty item there before thinking it was a coin. So, wow, look at this. Our first silver coin and it be a shilling. Arr, I love my silver. Look how worn this guy is too. That is probably the worst condition. A silver coin coming out from this site just yet. But what an amazing one at that. So he'll clean up quite nice. Like everything coming out from here. So awesome, awesome. A beautiful early coat of arms shillings. So one shilling worth 12 pen, uh, pennies. 12 pence I was going to say. 12 pennies or 12 pence. So uh, two of them makes a florin. Awesome, awesome stuff. Hopefully uh, we do hit on another florin here today. We must have pulled uh, pounds and pounds out of this place by now. Uh, quite a few, uh, quite a lot of money. So a lot of money for back in the day. I always, uh, you know, wonder when you find a, a beautiful shilling like that or a florin or what, whatever it be. I uh, always wonder to myself, oh, wow, <laughs> wonder who lost that. And I wonder if they knew they lost it. I wonder if they went and searched for it, all that sort of stuff. So that is very cool. Our first coin and a shilling. Uh, the Equinox 800, what a ripper. Yeah, we're hitting on that shovel. Look at the sensitivity. I mean, we're still hitting on the shovel from that far away. A really, really great sensitivity of Equinox 800 there. Let's try and find another great target. A few sketchy ones there. Some will have seen as I headed over sort of to where Zave is now, as I headed over there last week, how you hit on all that red scoria gravel. So what I'm going to do, I think, is we're just going to do uh, some zigzagging hunt, uh, hunting up the back here and uh, try and hit on uh, pick up or pick up where we left off last week. So that's what we're going to do, get you over in back corner and uh, we're going to start from over there, do a bit of random hunting up and down and see what we can find. Rightio, so we nearly made it over to the uh, over to the corner of the oval there. Not quite. Uh, I got distracted though. Who would have thought? We got a nice uh, signal here. I cannot walk away from. That's going to be another silver. That could be a florin. We've just had such a good run on silver coins. I think uh, what nearly 20 silver coins out of here uh, in the last three uh, detecting sessions. So uh, who knows? Maybe this is going to be another one for the collection. Some of have seen too, we're keeping it all in a tally. Round one, round two, round three, however many rounds it takes us to hunt out this site. Well, within about a month anyway, so I'm not going to, uh, I mean, it could take years, so I'm not going to uh, show and share everything for the next, uh, what, three, five years, however long it takes us. However, I will be uh, basically keeping a tally of what we've got. There he is. I can see copper, so he is a roo penny. There we go, little half roo. Just, um, just tricked again. I uh, honestly thought that was going to be another florin. 1943, 1943, I should say. Uh, half roo penny. Awesome, awesome. Uh, one thing about the uh, the silvers too, we found so many. We have found so many pennies. Absolutely dozens, dozens and dozens. I think that is it. That's it. Let's move you on to the next, and let's see if we can get you under the tree there. And start, as I said, doing a bit of a, a zigzag hunt all the way sort of up and along the back there. Let's stand this shovel up. <coughs> We're gonna keep the camera rolling and wander over. We're just gonna have to keep coming back for the shovel. Dominic is a bit, uh, bit sidetracked today. Bit of a funny signal there. I have been digging a bit of rust, so it's a 
some of these uh, sketchy signals I'm more inclined to walk away from uh, still at the moment, just due to the fact that uh, I still am in cherry picking mode. That sounds pretty good. We're going to give him a dig. We'll sit him down there, mark the spot with the coil, go back and grab that shovel. I often think too, how nice would it be uh, to have like a shovel holster or something? You know, something that you could uh, put the shovel there and uh, carry it alongside you. I've seen people have uh, harnesses and slings and, and what have you and, uh, you know, put them over their back. Which, I don't know if it would be that, uh, I don't know if it'd be that convenient to be honest. Always having to uh, put it on your back and take it off your back like Robin Hood <laughs> trying to um, trying to dig all these targets out maybe uh, okay uh, if you're out in a big paddock like I've got a few uh, massive paddocks I've still got to get to uh, I'd love to organize a group hunt there I'm not sure if the landowner is going to be all that thrilled about it I have not actually approached and asked her yet she is an old elderly lady so she might just say oh, no nah, look sorry I don't want that happening on my land, but look, I um, if I was out in an open paddock like that, a big old race course or something like that, where you um, were walking around uh, constantly and uh, not digging too many targets out in between, then yes, it would be something that I would ideally have, like a sling or a harness for the shovel here, uh, so you could basically just wander around, have a hand free, so... I think we're going to be tricked by another rusty nail here, just leading us off in the hole there. I think that's what's going on. It is too, it is too, right. So that tells me one thing, too many rusty nails already coming out. We got one first, we snagged the shilling, and now here is another rusty nail. So that tells me one thing, we need to bump that iron bias up just a little bit and probably knock that sensitivity down a one or two. You can hear the machine uh, sort of chirping along, sitting there. It probably doesn't help Xavier uh, not too far away, uh, creating that little bit more AMI. So see how it's just sitting there bouncing along. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock that down we're going to go down to the 23. That will quieten it down a bit. And now what we're going to do is we're also going to run over, hold the button in. We're going to knock that iron bias up. Just one. We're trying to cancel out any more of those nails because uh, we're hitting on a few false signals. So might even knock the recovery speed up to seven also. So now we've changed the settings, ideally, uh, we do need to now run a uh, another noise cancel, so I'm going to be pointing it at Xavier this time. Because <laughs> he's probably my biggest source of EMI at the moment, especially being up the other end and not not uh, not near that house. Uh, the house is over there, so Xavier being so close, he's probably my biggest source of EMI. So let's do that. Let's stop digging rusty nails. Noise cancel. Hey, Zave. Kapow. Righto, back on the ground. Ideally, that should be running very quiet now. Not too bad at all, not too bad. I think it's uh, me moving it a little bit too. So let's dig with that. And let's see how we go. I'm picking up on that shovel again there. Let's dig a few more of those truer, nice sounding signals. Like that guy there. 19, 18. Definitely a coin, probably a sixpence or even a half penny. Let's go grab back, uh, back and grab that shovel. I'm missing my little man Dominic today. He is here. He's just sidetracked with his new game. So a new Nintendo Switch game. He, uh, he's done a mighty job there last week though helping me detect and carry the shovel around so no complaints here he can uh, sit and do what he likes today and enjoy let's move that uh, detector out of the way a bit such a beautiful day today too uh, like the other day when we were here 
So the sun is out. Uh, they've got a, a slight breeze just on my back, which is quite nice. No flies, which is even better. Last couple, or the first couple of times detecting at this site, there was flies everywhere. I don't know what it was. So it is dairy country out here. A lot of dairy farms. Uh, I did not mend, I did not manage to catch up, unfortunately, with the farmer across the road the other day either. So never mind. Yet to uh, yet to happen. So there we have a half penny, not a silver sixpence, which is generally the case at an 18 and a 19. Nice early one. It is too. Queen Victoria there. So nice early Cedar Britannia. I just cannot see any design on the back there. I can just see a design so that's all right we'll clean him up end of this video and add him to the collection on the bench there at home uh, we must have what 150 coins there by now that's just phenomenal round one we did over 50 coins i think it was round two we did about 30 or 40 coins and uh or oh, i think more even uh, round round three uh we did oh look another 20 odd i, I don't really know to be honest it'll all uh, basically come out of the in the wash at the end when we do a big tally up and a big total so just a phenomenal sight though uh, just pennies and coins everywhere so we're going to continue on over to the shade now and uh, we'll come back when we find something good what do you got there mate oh, so there you go Zave just yelled out I didn't want to interrupt you while you were filming dad but I just dug one half penny let's turn around to the sunlight here and let's have a look 1932 I think I can see did you scratch him? No. No? Who scratched him? Dominic. Dominic? Oh, of course. That's what we always do, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We blame our brother. So, 1932, one half penny. Well done, Zave. That's your first coin for today, mate. Mm. You are smashing it. Where you're, you're working under the shade there, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, my man. Well done. Keep on going. Uh, I, bet, oh, yeah, I bet you can snag that silver coin, I reckon. That's got another target here too. Just as Zave yelled out to me. We just found him. Sort of over near where we found the uh, the cap guns and the florins too. So I might dig a little bit of a uh, bigger hole for this one because I don't want it to be a cap gun and uh, end up hitting it. That would be awkward, wouldn't it? I did find another cap gun here the other week. Although, sadly, it was not in the best condition, so never mind. We cannot win them all. <gasps> we do have something. What is it? A badge, maybe? <gasps> oh, wow. It's part of an old tractor. It is the side of an old tractor. Look at that. The axles for its wheels. A little part of the front bumper. I wonder if there's any more in the hole. That's an awesome little piece. As I said, um, didn't know what this guy was really, so the fact that we're over where a lot of the rubbish was being discarded, uh, just knew that I should be digging a little bit bigger, just in case it is not a coin. And there we go. I'm glad I didn't hit that guy. Look at the detail for the side of the engine, the oil filter, uh, the fuel lines, all that sort of stuff, the exhaust coming out the side. What a very, very cool piece. I think he's even got a part of his seat attached still uh, too, so... These are really cool, these old tractors, the old Fergie. It gives me memories of when I was a young kid. And um, we used to jump on pars. We used to sit on the, on the wheel guards, uh, basically sitting there uh, watching the wheels flick around uh, behind us. Uh, highly illegal now. So they've all got the rollover protection systems, the ROPs on them now. And um, also, uh, you're, <laughs> you're definitely not allowed to sit and ride on the mud guards. So there we go. Awesome stuff. We are still wandering over. Uh, to the uh, the tree there, and it looks like Zave has got another coin. What do you got this time, buddy? A, um, <gasps> oh, no way! No way! That is a sixpence. Where did you snag that one? Just over there. Just over there, in the same hole? Um, no. No? Different hole? Just barely. My man, that is awesome. What day do you got? 19. Can I give him a clean on my pants? Yeah. I'd, uh, I'll clean him on my pants rather than your shorts. And mum will yell at me then, not you. It works out even better, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well done, Xavier. Just brought over the half penny. Now he brings over a beautiful silver sixpence. And last time he scored that 1936 one florin two shillings. This boy is on fire. 
look at that well done well done awesome work says he you keep going and uh, i'm sure that uh, that half penny and then the sixpence i'm certain it is going to turn into a florin for you well done mate again uh, awesome work we're going to keep going and uh, we're going to see what else we can find now because save is starting to beat me we can't have that can we as someone said there the other day in the chat uh, you know it won't be long at all and save will uh, give you a run for your money i tell you what i 100 percent agree even dominic too so dominic's still a little bit young though uh being only six years old and um yeah he's a little bit different to xavier all kids are different and uh dom is a little bit more sort of sensitive if you like um so uh Zave's a bit more of a an outgoing kid and uh generally picks up picks things up and uh hits the ground running just like detecting there's our next target bit of a sketchy signal bit of a faint signal however we're going to make a coin out of that that's going to be our next silver coin hopefully to keep us in line with saviour uh, he is going to beat me otherwise the competition is on so let's give him a dig I move that coil out of the way brandon 600 here the other week uh, it was just you know great machine absolutely great machine however i will say and um yeah, you know, 600, as I said, is a wonderful machine. It's got all the capabilities of the Equinox 800. The only thing is, it's limited in the settings that you can change, which does make things a little bit harder, uh, you know, just due to the fact that some of these targets, these deeper silver coins and what have you, mixed in with the trash, uh, if you be able to adjust the settings uh, like you can on the 800, really make those tones and signals stand out. Uh, for what you're listening to and what you're hunting for it makes it a lot easier the equinox 600 as i said uh, it, it, it's 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 um limited into what you can actually change so making it that bit harder to distinguish between different targets so not saying it's not as capable it is it's just as capable as the equinox 800 uh, just nice to be able to change those settings around a bit and ideally uh, set up a, a program that really suits you so hence why i set up the equinox 800 uh, coin shooting program because over the years uh, you know hitting all these wonderful old sites i really determined the best settings uh, to use to find these coins and as a lot will know uh, they work they work immensely well so let's see what we got here i've pushed him around now i've lost him it's gonna be a coin or is it no it's not xavier is going to beat us what do we got here a little bit of rubbish by the looks there you go maybe a little bit of tin or, or lead or alloy by the looks all melted up so as we're moving over to the back of the school where they were burning and burying a lot of their rubbish so kids were paid back in the day to do that too i've talked to a lot of uh, the older generation and um, they often say you know go to the back of the school mate if you're hunting these old schools go out the back of the school and um, you'll find uh, the old coins and all the old rubbish they would often uh, get the job of you know going and burning and discarding the rubbish and they'd get a penny or whatever for doing it they'd get paid for doing it however a lot of the time um, they said you know a lot of these old timers that i spoke to they'd say about the fact that um uh, a lot of kids rich kids that come to school in certain areas you know uh, every every family was different some had money some didn't uh, some of these rich kids that come to school they literally had pennies in their bag in their lunch bag uh, that they would throw out accidentally or not knowing you know so uh, these other kids these poorer kids who would uh, you know uh, as i've spoken to a few of them they'd say oh we didn't we didn't have much as uh, as kids so uh, we would um uh, get the job of taking the rubbish out the back and, and burn it and often find coins so i just think that's fascinating so really really cool i love um love speaking uh, to the old timers and uh, the old generation because that's where the history really is isn't it okay so there is our next uh, sweet sounding signal we still have not made it over into the corner yet as uh, xavier is over there now so we might just leave that alone and continue on going where we are here and then sort of make our way to the right and head up along the trees there let's give this guy a dig though he's got me intrigued definitely going to be a coin let's have a look i um just quickly too uh, i'm going to touch on this a lot more 
However, just quickly, uh, I will say my um, my uncle come down there the other week. I had a bit of a, a catch up with my uncle, and um, truly, absolutely, truly fascinating. He has done our family history, uh, our family history tree, and he's been researching uh, since the late 80s. So, uh, what 30 odd years of research, and he's just had a recent breakthrough uh, in 2015, uh, contacting through contacting different people and uh, you know sending away for different records and what have you. Uh, I'll just say though quickly, um, he has legitimately traced uh, my side of the family, my father's side of the family, the Phillips name, uh, my last name is Phillips, and basically he's traced the Phillips name uh, back to 1816 in England, and uh, basically uh, my great, 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 uh, whatever, however you say it, he was, his name was Richard Phillips, and I'll just give you a quick rundown, really, really fascinating stuff. Uh, he was running around England, and uh, chances were he was trying to get a passage out here to Australia, and he did just that. He stole some clothes, uh, he stole some boots, uh, some pants, uh, he stole some uh, jocks, some, uh, some briefs, and even a shirt, and uh, we've got the actual transcript uh, of the, uh, the, you know, the draper uh, selling these clothes, or presumably selling these clothes to Mr. Richard Phillips. Phillips, and uh, he did the runner. He took the clothes, said he would be back to pay, and uh, he did the runner, and he ran off. So uh, the 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 the, uh, the the cops caught up with him. They arrested him. Uh, we've got the actual court court transcript from November uh, 1816 over in England there, and uh, basically he was sentenced. He was found guilty, a sentence to seven years hard labour here in Australia, and uh, transported out on the ship named Morley uh, in November 1816. So he arrived, uh, or sorry, uh, sentenced in November 1816. He was sent out in uh, December 18, uh, 1818, I think it was. Uh, 1818, he landed here in Australia anyway at the penal colony in Sydney. So absolutely fascinating stuff. What I'm trying to say is I can trace my family history, uh, or my, my uncle has traced uh, the Phillips side family history right back through uh, to 1818 landing here in Australia. And not only that, can trace it and legitimately prove that he was uh, well we did come here as convicts so there we are my uh my you know my early family history uh, we started out here in australia as convicts so isn't that just phenomenal just amazing and um look some three years after uh richard phillips actually got here uh, he applied for a, a, a request to marry. Uh, he actually, uh, a lot of the convicts were sent to read, uh, to learn how to read and write when they were not working in the chain gangs, uh, helping build roads and clear trees, what have you. And so Richard Phillips actually applied uh, to Governor Macquarie at the time and uh, applied for a hand in marriage, and it was rejected. Uh, he was told he was not allowed to marry. So uh, basically, four years later, after he'd finished his seven years hard labour, a penal colony sentence, he then went on to become a free man. We have the free pass, uh, where he basically uh, become a free, a free citizen, a free, a free man here in Australia. And look what he did. Uh, he actually become a successful man, like a lot of the, um, like a lot of the early convicts. You know, they weren't, um, they weren't just convicts through and through they didn't just um you know do bad things come and serve their time and then continue to do bad things a lot of them went on to become actually quite wealthy prominent members of society and that is exactly what uh, richard then did so he did his seven years hard labor here in australia and uh, basically after he'd finished his hard labor sentence of seven years he went on and took the hand of marriage uh, without the request of governor Macquarie. he was a free man he could do what he wanted uh, so he took the um the request and uh, got married to this lady there uh, who ran an orphanage and helped him learn how to read and write uh, when he first come over so they got married and uh, long story short he was a successful business owner he went and ran uh, three different pubs uh, the uh, the Lord Nelson Hotel in Sydney, which still exists today, and uh, not too long ago, uh, about two or three years ago, my partner and I actually uh, went up and had uh, a pub meal and a drink, uh, had a beer up in the Lord Nelson Hotel. So 
uh, just to pay my respects to my early ancestors there. So he uh, founded and ran the Lord Nelson, uh, Nelson Hotel in Sydney, at Kent and Argyle Street, Sydney. Uh, we have him paying the licenses, uh, the, the publican licenses, for over 10 years there. Uh, he also ran, uh, operated and ran the Quarrymen's Arms Hotel and also uh, the Sailor's Arms Hotel. So really, really amazing. He went on to run three very prominent hotel businesses in Sydney. So just amazing, amazing history. And uh, I thank my uncle for helping me to learn it. So anyway, we have a 1942 kangaroo penny there and uh, in quite good condition too. What a bloody ripper. So awesome stuff, really, really cool. And uh, Zave is still patiently waiting after I've been explaining all that family history. Zave is still sitting here patiently waiting uh, for me to basically see what he has found. He's got another coin. Or no. <gasps> oh my word, Xavier. Wow. <laughs> oh my lord, that is silver too. Wow. That is amazing. You've just taken me completely by shock, Save. I thought you had another coin. Wow, that is a very, very special piece. Where did you snag that one, my man? Just there, just on the surface, pretty much. Serious? That's the one that you said it could be a cap gun or a toy car on the surface uh, with the tree root, was it? Yeah. Well done. Save, well done, mate. Come here, buddy. Ah, oh, you're a legend. You are a legend. There's nothing more enjoyable than uh, going out and enjoying a, a hobby yourself. You know, I thoroughly enjoy metal detecting, obviously. Uh, however, to see uh, my son, my two sons, uh, you know, coming out and enjoying it with me, I think is just so special. Zave has quite the relic collection now too, uh, especially that beautiful 1861 uh, Robert Hyden Co. token that he found just laying on the golf uh, on the surface in the gold fields. So, 100 and, uh, what 60 year old token found by a 10 year old boy without even a detector. So, amazing stuff, save. And I tell you what, mate, you're even more amazing. Well done, buddy. So next target, and uh, I'm still trying to get over the shock of Zave finding that beautiful pendant. God, he is a gun. I just love it. So I absolutely love seeing them, seeing the excitement on their face and uh, seeing the amaz uh, amazement that they get from unearthing all this treasure. Let's face it, what kid does not love finding treasure? I cannot really refer to Zave as a kid though now. He's more like a little man. He is just turning into such a good man at that too. We've got our next coin, a half rupee, oh, no, not half rupee penny, a half Commonwealth penny, I should say, once the camera focuses. There he goes. And uh, we're going to run up along the fence line here, as I said there. So, 19, 18, oh, what a ripper. The end of World War One, 1918. So, one half penny in quite good condition. Another one for the pouch. Save. Oh, look at the, uh, look at the impression in the dirt. How cool is that? I think the impressions sometimes are just as cool as the coin unfortunately they fall away too easily anyway so how cool is that though we're going to uh try and beat zave uh to the end of the oval well, not really beat him we're going to try and beat him in fines anyway though as i said the competition is on he is killing us today absolutely killing us we've got the one shilling and uh that's about it so let's see how we go let's see if we can find a few more i need my um Little Dominic here carrying my shovel for me. There's our next good one. I got my eye on him. Let's grab the shovel. I uh, just need to work out where it is. There it is. And um, hopefully, this is going to be a silver coin. Really after. Oh, there he is. Straight out of the hole. Really after a cap gun today. Would be nice. There we have another little half penny. This time we got a roux. There we go. I've got a kanga half Commonwealth there before, and now half roux penny. So moving on to the next. Let's get Xavier. Let's beat him to the end. Oh, beat him to all the silver coins. Doesn't matter who digs them anyway, because uh, let's face it, uh, one day when I pass on, my collection will all end up. That's shovel so sensitive uh, my collection will all end up with the boys anyway so and I'm sure they'll thoroughly enjoy it nothing like a bit of friendly competition though keeps things interesting there's our next one 
Tell you what, we didn't hit on uh, this many coins the other day when we were working this side of the oval. We seem to be on a bit of a run of them now. And this one's going to be a kangaroo penny, I dare say, or a florin. Fingers crossed for that florin. Ground's so easy to pop up out here too. It's quite nice soil to dig in. We're straight on him. Look at that. Did not even need the pin pointer. Just need to roll him out of the hole. And uh, what did I say? Roo penny. And that's what we've got. Another kangaroo penny. He's ringing in at a 30, 31 there. So tell you what, the coins are still coming out from this side, aren't they? It's just phenomenal. They are like chook feed. They are everywhere. Stand up. Saves winning. He's uh, got another target too, by the looks. Digging like a little crazy man. He can probably hear me in the background uh, saying uh, it's a competition. He's probably smiling, thinking I'm going to beat you, Dad. Oh, they are everywhere. This could be another Rue Penny being in line with that other one. Let's see how quick we can get him out. I should have got him right in that. Um, should have got him right in that scoop. There he is. I thought I did. Quick Rue Penny. I said um, basically uh, the other week there. If you if you're quick enough, you know you can pinpoint and target and what have you. Uh, you're quick enough, you can retrieve the coins and the targets quite quickly. 1942. Kangaroo penny there, in great condition. Uh, running up along the trees. Trees probably sucking a lot of the moisture out of the ground, keeping those coins in quite nice shape. So, quite nice condition. The roo pennies, uh, I will say too. Another? It couldn't be. We'll say too. Um, pennies uh, vary in, uh, you know, like you can. You can find a Commonwealth penny in uh, one spot and it'd be horrible condition. And then, you know, two meters away, you can find a kangaroo penny, very a similar, you know, very similar spot and depth and everything like that. And it can be in absolute perla condition. So it's just really strange, uh, you know, different copper content throughout the years that they put in the coins, zinc and what have you. Uh, it definitely helps them survive differently in the ground. It's just interesting to see. I uh, tend to find that the early Britannia pennies too, they tend to come out the best. Uh, the, the, that nice dark green patina they have on them, uh, just absolutely beautiful. So this is another Rue Penny. Look at that, three Rue Pennies in a row. We're smashing it. And we did hit him just slightly. I think we took a nick, yeah, just slightly on the side. So another 1943 Kangaroo Penny. What a ripper, the myths of World War II. And just imagine the events taking place during that time period, 1943. I think uh, D-Day uh, had taken place by then. Uh, troops had landed and uh, heading their way off into Normandy. So crazy, crazy, absolutely phenomenal. And some will have seen that um, beautiful Royal Artillery badge there we found the other week, hunting over in the corner. No. Okay, we've got another one there. Uh, what a ripper that was too. I'll throw up a picture. Uh, top left, you'll be able to have a look. What a bloody ripper that was. I really should have checked this hole a little bit better. It's uh, turned messy now. That is okay though, because fill them in, that's all right. It's an abandoned school, it's not used, hasn't been used in the last 10 years. As long as we fill our holes in, uh, we are good to go. The grass will grow back. Let's take a very gentle slice out of the back there. I wonder what Xavier's found since their last clip too. He's been keeping quiet over there. <laughs> a really cool, um, I was saying, there he is. No, he's not. That's the impression. He's still in the hole. Uh, it is really cool, that family history that I was just speaking about too before. Uh, it's just an absolute, clean my jeans off. Got another roof penny here. It is an absolute credit uh, to my uncle, Daryl, uh, who has done all that research uh, thoroughly, you know, uh, 1988, I think he said he started, and uh, he did not get a real big breakthrough uh, up until 2015. There's a little bit more uh, to the story of Richard Phillips. He, uh, <laughs> look, he did change his name and, and do a bit of a dodgy later. I didn't say that before. Uh, nothing to hide, but um, he ran the three hotels and... Um, 
I don't know. I don't, look, I don't know. I don't know. He did something dodgy. We're still trying to work it out ourselves. However, we've got him paying license fees uh, for the three hotels in Sydney for about 10 years. And then um, not too long, you know, or 10, 10 to 12 years or something, I think Daryl had him pinned there in Sydney running those hotels. And then <laughs> not too long after, let's move the uh, shovel back a bit because that's a bit of a coin spill there. There could be another. We don't want the shovel interfering. Not too long after, though. Mr. Richard Phillips uh, decided that uh, he would do a dodgy, and I don't even think I don't. Like, I've got a lot of the history there. I need to to read through again. Uh, well, Daryl and I spent about seven hours uh, at the kitchen table there that day, going through it all. And uh, I tell you what, there was a stack, a stack of uh, paperwork to go through, and it's a bit mind-boggling, really, to take it all in. So I have to read through it all again. However, he did something dodgy, uh, we're not quite sure what, and um, took off with a heap of, or turned his assets, assets into money, <laughs> uh, as you do, and took off on the run. Uh, not too long after, he was seen uh, hiding out basically over in Tasmania, so quite interesting, you know, why was he in Tassie, why did he have to... Uh, jump ship and, and run from Sydney over to Tasmania. Who would know? Quite interesting though. So I've lost that target. Absolutely lost it. My watch keeps going funny too if you're wondering what that noise is. There he is. Right there. Let's give him a dig. Yeah, everything sort of comes through my watch. Uh, from you know signal through my phone notifications messages calls what have you so if you, um, if you hear my watch going off in the background it's just that it's just notifications and signals coming through so interesting stuff though Richard Phillips done the runner and uh, headed over to Tassie I've uh, got court court transcripts and what have you over there and um, uh, him paying certain things what have you and then uh, not too long after he was found there we go. Another Rue Penny. He was found over in South Australia uh, for a few more years. And he even took his hand uh, to the gold mining rush. So very fascinating stuff. Uh, there we go. A 1943 Rue Penny. I think I've got the date right there. 1943. Another penny. Just amazing. So took his hand. Uh, sorry about my uh, in and out story. I'm just trying to think of it as I go. Uh, took his hand to gold mining though. And some will know, uh, some might have heard of uh, the Little Bendigo Gold Fields. Uh, now, it was also referred to as Narina, uh, Narina Gold Fields. And um, quite a heavily mined area. It's just north of Ballarat. Funnily enough, uh, I have done quite a bit of detecting there. And even more strangely enough, um, Richard Phillips uh, later come down, oh no sorry, sorry, I will say not Richard, uh, his son William later come down and was one of the first founders of that gold field, uh, of that area. So my family has very strong ties to Ballarat uh, and the gold mining history there. In actual fact on my mother's uh, mother's maiden name on her uh, family side, uh, my other family side, basically they come over uh, a little bit later and not as convicts, they come over as free settlers, however they were from Tipperary Island and coming over due uh, to wanting a better life due to the p uh, potato famine going on in Ireland at the time, many people starving and dying and nothing to eat, no work, no jobs, no money. And so they come over here to look to better their life, uh, lives. So, and they did just that uh, quite. Um, they come over here and um, took their hand to the mining. Once again, uh, around Ballarat, Adelaide lead, uh, a little bit further north, what have you. And uh, one point, uh, my uh, early or great-great-grandfather, he was a, um, a stagecoach driver, which I think I've mentioned there before. Uh, yeah, he drove a six-horse uh, stagecoach in the goldfields. So at first he was a miner. He obviously didn't make his bread and butter that way, so he went on to become a stagecoach driver. So very fascinating. Uh, I can say on my dad's side, Philip's side, we have been here in Australia uh, for, what, 200 and, uh, 204 years now? 
uh, and mum's side uh, well over well over 150 years so very very fascinating stuff and i'm a convict at heart now i know uh, convict richard phillips so awesome stuff little thrippence there a 1931 21 i think a 1921 one for us to clean up anyway so next silver coin and uh tell you what all these messages on my phone are calls and, and uh, notifications i best see what's going on I'll stop the video and uh Get you back recording again to finish off the rest of this oval we're about halfway now uh, so we'll see what else we can find zaves over there beeping behind me and we're in the lead rightio so moving on from that last hole we've just filled him in there and uh, let's see zaves actually beating us now or in line with us let's see what else we can get i was gonna say it sounded like there was something good there and there is Maybe another little silver sixpence or threepence. A very, very short, sharp, tiny, tiny little signal. So nice, uh, nice one to dig and see what we can come out with. I said there uh, before, very, very uh, interesting and a, a real credit to my uncle Daryl. I want to learn more. I, uh, I'm going to now, I said to him, um, I'd love to uh, trace back further, you know, I'd trace back before Richard Phillips, who was his parents, where did he, where was he born, all that sort of stuff, and um, then also add in everything else, all the history, current, present, uh, leading up to today. So there we have a sneaky little signal, it turned out to be a little silver thrippence, a little wheat thrippence this time. We're killing it on the silvers once again today, 1940. Two or three, I think that more looks like a three. One more to clean up. And look, all these silver coins, they come up uh, exceptionally well. You know, once you uh, get home, you soak them in uh, lemon juice. I generally soak them for, you know, a couple of minutes, five minutes, whatever. It doesn't really hurt. If you don't, if you soak them too long, it will uh, eat away at some of the coins, especially the later made uh, thrippences and silvers, the 50% silver. Uh, they do eat away a little bit and uh, leave a bit of a, a pitting in the coins. So. Now you do have to be careful, but um, a lot of them I just soak for, you know, five minutes in the lemon juice and then basically after uh, soaking, I then uh, run, uh, rinse with water and then make up a bit of a paste in my hand uh, with bicarb soda and rub uh, the coin with bicarb soda and uh, basically, there's our next one, basically uh, the more you rub it, the more you clean it, the better it'll come up. I have actually done, uh, shared a, a video on just how I clean my coins with the tumbler and also a bit of a trick, uh, you know, similar similar in style uh, with the bicarb there. You can also do a similar trick with uh, toothpaste, believe it or not. A toothpaste cleans those coins up, those silver coins, exceptionally, exceptionally well. So uh, be sure to give it a look. I'll throw it up top left corner. Uh, how to clean uh, coins and relics with the tumbler and also with toothpaste. Uh, don't knock it until you've tried it. It works really well. Let's see what we got here. Where is he? He's gone. He's disappeared. Let's just check you don't have him on the end of the shovel. Sometimes can happen. Look at that, he was too. Sitting on the end of the shovel. Not a coin at all. A little squished bottle top. I don't mind showing the trash coming out of this site because I tell you what, like we've dug a little bit of rust today, a few rusty nails, but um, I tell you what, uh, this site is just phenomenal. A trash to treasure ratio is just amazing. They must have um, uh, kept a very, very clean school while the students were here. The students must have went on yard duty every day cleaning up. Well, there must have been a lot of naughty students here maybe uh, that were always on yard duty cleaning up. I don't know, so. Very interesting though. Thought I heard a signal over there then. There's one. You can just hear them when you sort of swing through and it really doesn't matter how quick you swing, ready? I mean, that's pretty bloody quick. I wouldn't be swinging that quick, but you've just seen, just there. 
Uh, just see how it gives off that nice tone. And uh, I generally swing through it like that, hear it, and then go back to it, which is pretty simple. There's no one. Beautiful one. So we've got two signals there to dig. Right there, we'll leave the detector sitting right over top of him. Grab the shovel, and uh-oh, uh I can see Xavier walking over. What's he got this time? What's he going to show me up with this time? Ah, oh, what? Another silver coin. Boy, you were on fire. I'm not taking you out to these sites anymore. You're stealing my coins. <laughs> that is quite all right, mate. You are most welcome, and I love having you here. So, 1942. Uh, you can tell it's a 42, and it has to be in the 40s because it's got a little D there for Denver. And we all, uh, all remember what D for Denver means. A D for Denver means uh, this coin was minted over in Denver, America. They also have an S underneath them uh, for San Francisco. So the D under that uh, coin there, Zave, means that during the war, uh, America was helping supplement and make our coins. Therefore, it is minted with a D uh, to indicate that it was made in Denver during the wartime, during World War II. How cool is that? Cool. cool. So that coin was not minted in Australia, even though it's an Australian coin, it was made in America and shipped over here to Australia. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well done, mate. Legend. Now, let's dig out this target and see what we've got. I think it was, uh, what we say, it was right under the coil, uh, coil there, wasn't it? So let's have a look. I'll just dig a bit of a, a wider plug hole there. So that... I know I'm going to get on him. I know I'm going to be straight on the coin. Because to be honest, I sort of lost um, lost track of where that one was. I got, uh, got a little bit distracted once again. Save is nailing that Vanquish 540. Uh, for a 10 year old, you know, I really have not gave him many lessons on that. Uh, just sort of set it up with the 18 to 40 and, uh, you know, and the depth and, and what have you. Uh, just run, run the 18 to 40 for him and uh, tell him, just stick those numbers, mate. Have fun. He just runs with it and loves it and does really, really well. So uh, it saves him digging too much trash. You know, I know he could be missing out on a lot of stuff, a lot of gold coins and uh, or gold items, I should say, in general, uh, just like me. However, a lot of the times uh, we will come back and revisit and dig these sites out, uh, digging out every lower number. Uh, if I, if save doesn't with me, uh, I certainly will. So I think we're digging a little bit off for that one. There we were, yeah, we were too. So, need to open that back bit up a bit more. I said, abandoned school site. Not currently used, or never going to be used again. Uh, this town just does not have the need ever for a school again. Not unless it magically grows. Oh dear, we've lost him. What is going on with this target? This one's really got me a bit confused. I think we just need to go deeper. It's going to be a little tiny silver coin, hopefully. Let's do it. Let's go deeper. He's got me a little bit confused. What's going on? All else fails. I know there's something there. All else fails. Dig deeper. Aha! Gotcha. That's where you're hiding. Not at the back in the side little trickster now let's see what he was it's gonna be a coin it's gonna be a coin let's pull it all out oh, yes it is too it's exactly what we we're chasing probably why the pinpointer was not hitting on it all that well we got a little silver sixpence isn't that incredible 1926 Zave's pulling the uh, the sixpences I'm pulling the threepences so uh, on a technicality, uh, in money terms, he is beating me. Uh, he's finding six pennies to every three pennies or three pence uh, that I find. So let's now fill this hole back in. Uh, two hands. It's uh, gotten out of control here. Let's fill this hole back in and uh, let's continue on a little bit further to the end. Zave is beating us. Okay, so that's all filled in. It looks a little bit better, doesn't it? It looks a lot better. It's okay, as I said. Uh, as long as we can uh, fill the dirt in level, it does not matter about a little bit of a loose dirt on the top. So that is quite okay. A rainstorm and uh, basically a few weeks and the grass will just grow straight up over it. You'll never even notice. 
and as I said it's an abandoned school so let's go after that next signal now there she be high signal like that so they're gonna be a bit of rubbish seems like quite a big signal like a big target I should say or it's going to be a florin I sort of pour uh, more put my sort of pour I sort of more put my money on it being a bit of rubbish or who knows maybe even a toy car could be our first toy car who knows maybe a massive silver coin spill and it'll put us in lead of Xavier <laughs> friendly competition as I said it's not about who wins that's just having a bit of fun Let's see what we got a very very high signal what do we got now? Five florins from this site. Not one today, but one uh, nearly every other day of hunting. So we've done quite well. And here it is, our first toy car. I can see the wheels. Oh, wheelie. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I don't know what he is yet. That is cool. Looks like, uh, looks like a little Porsche. We'll have to clean him up. I don't have my toothbrush, uh, toothbrush with me. I wish I did. There we have it, though. Our first toy car, he's not going to be a Lesney, unfortunately. He's going to be a later model toy car with a bit of a squished roof too. Awesome, awesome. Let's try and clean him up a little bit. On the pants. And he's a Hot Wheels. There you go. 1974. So, hmm, I was a little bit off. I would have thought, uh, I would have thought uh, mid-90s. There we are, 1974. Does he say what it is? Yeah, Porsche 911. I was right <laughs> awesome stuff awesome I love my toy little toy cars that is the first one today if only it was a Lesney toy car even a dinky or a corgi uh, I would have settled for but that's okay hot wheels it is had some pretty hot wheels on it look someone's left their shirt here I don't know who that is maybe someone who mowed the grass there the other day we'll fill that hole in and let's keep going 30 31 that guy was Nice high signal. You see him. Oh, we got another one there. You see there. Hitting on the shovel. It's so sensitive. Another big signal right there. 21, 22, 23. Let's open this guy up. Let's see what we've got also. It could be another toy car. Uh, some kids could have been. Uh, this could have been their favourite spot to sit and play. Uh, during break time let's have a look I can feel something it's not a toy car there we go that's our bit of rubbish what are we doing Dom? Mm, I don't know I don't know? <laughs> having fun on your game? Yep. he keeps running over and patting me on the back <laughs> a very cute kid very funny little boy Every time we've been here, uh, he's just been running laps up and down uh, the cricket pitch here and um, making a game out of it. So very, very cute. This is the first day he's actually brought his switch out, which is quite okay. I don't mind him sitting there playing the switch because every other time uh, he's been absolutely wonderful out here. So his first day doing what he wants to do and having a break from detecting. Sort of. He's still out here. <laughs> Let's see what else we can find. Save has bet us to the end too. He's smashed us. Let's just um, see how many coins he's got out. That silver brooch was just a ripper piece. I could not believe that. He's done so well getting that. He's done so well getting everything today. Oh, there's one. Maybe not. Thought I heard something good then. We might keep swinging. We're nearly there. I thought I heard something good then too. We are nearly there though. Uh, we'll keep swinging. And if we find anything good uh, before the end of the oval here, we'll come back and show you, uh, show you a look. That's a coin if I've ever heard one. Let's go after him. Let's grab that shovel and uh, let's see if we can 
find him. I've lost him. I was too busy looking at the shovel. <laughs> Let's give him a pinpoint again. <laughs> yep, that's where I thought he was. <laughs> right there, somewhere. It's going to be a coin though. Pretty bloody short. Where is he? Where is he? We've got to beat Zave. We've got to, uh, we've got to get this uh, show on the road, don't we? I should probably stop filming. That's the key. I'm filming. Zave's not. That's why he's beating me. There he is. That's what I thought. Another coin and a Commonwealth penny this time. In uh, not as good a condition either. I've just seen a little bit of corrosion there going on. So that's awesome. One half penny uh, or one full penny, I should say. Not a half. That's a full. Uh, too big for a half penny so one full penny i said let's get this show on the road let's really uh, move on i like to be efficient in everything i do uh, so and uh, let's face it zoe's beaten me no one likes to be beaten i'll let him have it though because he's my son we're gonna go after this one too I do believe that could be another little thrippence hiding there quite deep, giving off a very faint signal. If not, we may be chasing rust again. Let's do it quickly though. Right, he's right down there. I do think he might be a coin. Although he's going to send us off on a bit of a goose, a wild goose chase off the back there. So I could be wrong. Hopefully not. Another bit of rust. Yes, it is too. Look at that. Right, so we probably need to bump up the um, the rust a little bit more. So there you go. We could even go up to one. Or stop fixating. <laughs> stop fixating on signals uh, that you know. As I said, if you if the more you swing over. Uh, a bit of rust, you know, if you get that sort of a quick beep out of it and then go back over and the detector distinguishes it as uh, basically nothing there, you know, you're only getting a one-way signal. If you fixate on that signal too much, going back and forth, back and forth, trying to make it a good signal, it's pretty much what happens. Uh, you get that one-way signal and then after a while it sort of turns into a two-way signal and you sort of think, oh, maybe that is a good target. And I will say too, a lot of the coins that I've dug uh, sites and, and what have you that I've dug over the years uh, some of those um, real sketchy real faint uh, signals can be just rust rightio so we're back we just had a bit of a mishap a young Xavier there he was just digging away and uh, he actually had a bee on him uh, on his uh, shoe there uh, just sort of bit him on the side of the of the foot so uh, he yelled out dad I've been bitten by something uh, he thought he was going to die I think He's okay now though, he's got a little bit of a swollen up ankle uh, where, where the bee nailed him. I'll tell you what, that ought to slow him down, that might uh, might, uh, might allow us to get in front. Ah uh, dear, poor fella, I'm just joking, it would have uh, would have hurt a lot. He's been stung by a few bees in his life um, and they, they're never much fun, they're never much fun. So. Uh, he sort of uh, leant down to dig the target, he seen it on him and um, it bit him and then he sort of flicked it off like that. So yeah, he, it did get him before he got it. So I said to Zave, if it's any consolation mate, when a bee stings you, he goes off and dies. So you're in pain, he's actually going off to die, poor bugger. So never mind, never mind, they both, uh, both had a bit of a bad moment there, the bee and Xavier. We've got a bottle top there, nothing special. We're nearly at the end of this oval, so. Then we've got to turn around and try and catch up with B-Boy. He's already halfway back. He's just doing amazing, so. We've got a bit of a, a, a handicap now, though. Young Dominic's agreed to help carry the shovel. Oops, I stuck him in a bit there. Too hard, sorry, Don. <laughs> so let's see if we can't catch up. To save. A few signals there. Sound very sketchy, though. Know. Well, 
while I've got you on camera, we're just going to dig out the better ones. Those other ones are ones that I can spend more time on digging another day. As I said, I'll be coming out uh, to dig every single target out here uh, one other time. So I uh, will say too, um, you know, a group hunt is something that I really want to do. A little bit of rubbish, a bit of peg. A group hunt is something I really, really want to do. Uh, I wanted to put it together through, uh, you know, a couple of years ago during COVID. Oh, well, unfortunately, during COVID, it, it stopped it, uh, being able to have big group meets, what have you. So, one thing I really want to do, though, set up a group hunt. Excuse me, Dommy. Uh, group meet, group hunt. Had, uh, I'm going to call it the Dig It Detecting, uh, Dig It Detecting Day. So, and everybody's welcome. I'm going to set up all the details and work it all out properly. I do believe I have a spot in mind that we can go. We'll leave that one. Um, so a really good spot we can go. Uh, I don't exactly know. We're going to turn around here. I don't exactly know what's going to be found there for the day. Tommy, can I have a shovel there, mate? I don't know what's going to be found there for the day. It's going to be open uh, crown bushland. Uh, there is a lot of gold mining history there. Uh, the location, as I said, I have uh, sort of determined. I haven't decided on 100%, so I won't give it away just yet. However, that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a big dig at detecting. Another bit of rubbish. What is going on, Basil? A big dig at detecting day. Uh, and um, basically, uh, a big group meet. And look... Uh, shout out some ideas. I'd love to hear them. Comment section below. Uh, basically, what you'd like to do, you know, um, there's going to be, I'm thinking about like setting up like uh, some activities for kids. Uh, obviously, my two boys will be there. So, kid friendly. And um, I'm even thinking, Dom, just move that shovel back a bit, mate. I'm even thinking, that's a nice target. I'm even thinking about doing a camp out, you know, uh, we could head up on the Friday night, camp Friday night, and, uh, you know, for anybody that wanted to join us on the Friday night, you're most welcome. Uh, if not, everybody else can rock up on a Saturday, if, that's, uh, if that suits you better, camp out a Saturday night and uh, head home on the Sunday, and finish up and, uh, and, and sort of say our goodbyes on the Sunday. So that's what I'm planning on doing, uh, a big group hunt on Crown Land. We do not have to ask permission, uh, which would be nice. So we're going to do that, and uh, everybody, as I said, is welcome. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do for food or drinks or, uh, you know, uh, toilets or anything like that yet. It might just be like a bit of a BYO, uh, bring your own uh, sort of setup, camp, food, whatever. Um, we will have, I will have some, um, I'm really hoping to get some uh, T-shirts and, and hats and beanies and, and all that sort of stuff done up soon. Uh, the funds just have not allowed it, though, lately. Everything going on, I've had a... Um, uh, quite a, a big dentist uh, bill to pay lately, which has not been helping. Another bit of rubbish. <laughs> what is going on? Well, actually, no, I won't say rubbish. That is the top of a keg handle, a keg tap handle. You can see where he's been broken off there in the middle. So awesome stuff. Another bit out of uh, off the oval. And back to what I was saying, uh, the group hunt will be coming up this year. I just need to work out uh, the ins and outs, the details a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be open, as I said, to everybody. And uh, I really hope, I really, really hope uh, to have a good turnout and have a great weekend. As I said, I don't really know what's going to be found there. Uh, it is a big, a big, huge open area. Uh, so we can just sort of go right. Um, you know, I can, I can sort of uh, do a bit of the research, which I have already. And... I can fill, in, uh, fill everybody in as to what I know, what I've learned about the area. And then everybody can just sort of uh, suit themselves and wander off and go hunt for coins, relics, all that old wonderful goldfield history. And uh, then we could also, uh, we could even uh, say, you know, put a time limit on it, you know, uh, everybody be back here in, uh, you know, three hours or whatever it be, two hours, you know, and uh, we'll then have some lunch and uh, show everybody, uh, you know, show everybody's finds, what have you. And uh, one thing I'm also thinking of doing is running a bit of a competition. So uh, if I don't have my t-shirts and hats and beanies and all this stuff, 
uh, with the detecting, uh, you know, the detecting merchandise ready just yet. I will have some stickers, uh, some other few other things there uh, as prizes to hand out. So fingers crossed, this is a coin. Last few bits of uh, targets have been rubbish. So that would be really cool. And um, as I said, we'll run a bit of a competition. Yes, we've got a coin. I just seen Dom throw his hands up in the air. Woohoo! We've got a coin. So yeah, that's what we're going to do run a bit of a competition and um, basically have a camp out and a dig it detecting day so I think that would be awesome and we'll say too on top of that uh, full of ideas lately well not lately these have been ideas that have been brewing for quite some time on top of that though um, basically I wanted to try and turn it into a bit of a fundraising event too uh, not for me I'm, I'm not greedy I don't care about money uh, I want to do it for uh, an appeal and the uh, a fundraising event uh, to donate money to an appeal and what I've chosen uh, which look I think a lot will agree with me uh, is the Heart Foundation so look basically um, I was sort of thinking of appeals uh, thinking of ways that um, uh, we could donate money as a group uh, a combined group and I think everybody would be all for it so I was thinking maybe a uh, quick entry fee, you know, $5, whatever, entry fee. And, um, you know, I know it's open crown land. You don't have to pay anything to be there. However, I think it would be nice to, as a collective, uh, as a collective group, be able to uh, basically uh, donate, uh, raise and donate some funds uh, for the Heart Foundation. So my mother suffers from heart disease. Uh, I also suffer from heart disease, as well as many other people in my family, uh, my sister included. Uh, basically, for all they've done for me uh, over the years, and for my mother, you know, uh, <laughs> without going into it too much, uh, my mum shouldn't even be here really, uh, and she's still still here with us today. So I am very fortunate for that. Very fortunate for the. Um, for the efforts that they've put in with me over the years since I was diagnosed. And um, look, I, I would just love to give back somehow, some way, uh, do my do my good deed. And I think that's what we're gonna do. Uh, fundraising event, a dig it detecting group day out on Crown land uh, with a small entry fee. And look, uh, anybody that's uh, willing or wanting to, uh, you know, I, I'm gonna try and chip in as much as I can myself. I'm not a rich man by any means, however I'll do my bit where I can. And uh, look, I think, as I said, as a collective, we can raise some uh, much needed money to help uh, the Heart Foundation and the appeal. And I think that would be a really great gesture. So that's what we're gonna do. And keep, uh, keep uh, stay tuned, because that's what I'm planning for future. And I would uh, really love to have you there and have you help supporting us for the day, so. That's Rust, we're going after Rust. A young Zave's standing here, uh, waiting for me to finish digging that. So I'm gonna dig it out in a minute. However, we're gonna see what young Zave's got first. Definitely Rust, I can see it in the hole. So let's have a look. Oh, oh my Lord, he's got a cap gun. He's nailed exactly what we wanted to find today. Unfortunately, pieces of those. So, wow, Zave, wow. I grabbed this part. I kind of pulled it and I thought it was stuck to dirt, so it kind of snapped off this. Oh no, oh no, can we have a look at the other piece? So that's the part of the barrel there. Oh, he's got some nice detail on him too. Let's zoom in and have a look. Nice intricate detail. Very cool, very cool. It's really hard, mate, with the cap guns because um, they're made out of die cast uh, and, and cast, that cast metal, unfortunately, deteriorates in the ground and breaks. So, yeah, a bit of a shame. How's your foot, Buster? Give us a look. Oh, I'll turn that pinpointer off. We are gonna get out of here very soon. Oh, it's a little bit red. He got the chicken legs out and uh, you can see where the bee nailed him. Now the swelling has gone down and even the bite marks. So awesome stuff. I said to Zave, uh, he's pretty, pretty tough nut, Zave, as you, uh, as you would have seen, as you'd know. Uh, I said to Zave though, you can either sit down, mate, and relax under the shade or buddy, uh, you can keep going. And to be honest, if you go sit down, mate, uh, all you're going to be concentrating on is the pain 
Whereas if you keep going, uh, if you feel like you can keep going, uh, it's gonna be uh, taking your mind off that pain and helping you. So really cool. And uh, he kept going as, uh, as I would have thought he would. He kept going and he's recovered himself a nice old cap gun. Just a shame it's a bit broken. So anyway, let's, uh, let's keep going and let's see what else we can find. We need to catch up to you, Zavs. You're, uh, you're beating us, mate, you're flying. Rightio, so we are finishing up on our, some of our last digs now. Uh, we've decided just to stay out the back here. There are still targets coming out, so uh, let's leave the front. As I said, let's leave the front until another day. That can be round five. And we can uh, get out there and dig plenty more. Can I have that shovel, uh, young Dominic? We've got another target to dig right here. I don't want to take my eye off him. And uh, something that also Zave may have missed He's just working right in front of us there. So uh, we're in Zave's, uh, sort of picking up on uh, where Zave's just walked. And uh, he's missed a few targets. One little two cent coin, a little half penny, and a piece of rubbish. So uh, just goes to show uh, you can easily, easily miss stuff. Uh, we're never, we're never perfect on the detectors, that's for sure. Uh, even myself, you know, uh, years of experience, thousands of hours on the machine. Uh, I can guarantee you, I still miss stuff. I know I do. Uh, I think you'd be lying if you said that you didn't. So I know there's some sites I go to and I walk over the same ground and I pull a florin out and I think, what? How did I miss that? Uh, it just happens though. It does happen. So happens to the best of us. What have we got? Another coin? Pinpointer will help. Still hiding there by looks. Oh, we've got two. Aha, uh -huh. bit of rubbish. We must have another bit of rubbish down here. I think we do too. The other end of it. That's okay. There he is. Another little bit of rubbish into the pouch. That was worth missing too, Zave. <laughs> he seems, he, every time I say it was not something good, he goes, yeah, no, I, I, I meant to miss that one, Dad. Um, I thought it was rubbish. I thought I'd let you dig it. He uh, acts like a cool cat and pretends like he did it on purpose. <laughs> uh, what a legend. What a legend. Learns from the best. All right, let's find something good now. Let's stop mucking around. There we are. As I said, the, sh uh, the, uh, the shovel, <laughs> the targets, thank you Dom, I do need the shovel. The targets are coming out thick and fast still from the back oval. Well, uh, they are thinning out, but still uh, quite nice. So considering we've pulled out well over 100 coins out of this back oval, uh, for them to even still be coming out, it just shows how phenomenal this site is. And uh, i tell you what, it was never 1903, it was established this school. However, it never had the biggest annual attendance, you know. Uh, we're out in the country out in the sticks out here so it was only the kids that lived in the area that come to this school and their parents and uh, what have you locals coming here for events and sports days so realistically you know there shouldn't be uh there shouldn't be this many coins here well not to say there shouldn't be it's just phenomenal that there is though so little one half penny our next target into the pouch we're not going to get much off him just yet and i tell you what we are going to get out of here very soon pack up and finish it is 131 on the watch there at the moment and uh, we've been going for a couple of hours now so about about hour and a half to be honest not that long at all really um but i do need to go out uh, go home and get a few jobs done so and the boys i'm sure are getting hungry and thirsty so time for some lunch too we did not bring any lunch out with us today let's just swing like a madman Miss some ground and let's get ourselves another good target. Let's see if we can't find that florin. How uncanny was it last week uh, that I mentioned we're going to get a florin and bingo, one popped out. Just phenomenal. So I think I only just set it uh, about five seconds before I got the target. Uh-oh, is this another one? 
let's have a look. Wouldn't that be uncanny? A two Florence. Uh, it was a 1942, that other one too. And um, so was the one prior to it uh, in round two at the uh, the start of the video that day. A 1942 Florence, the both of them. Look at Dom, he's off like a rocket. Go on, run your quickest lap. Ready, set. You're cheating. You're already going. Put the switch down, start again. I, okay, yep, just throw it. <laughs> Ready? All right, ready? Hang on, no, 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 stop, stop. Start again, you cheater. I'm gonna go three, two, one, and then you go, all right? Three, two, one, go. He's like the flash. He's as quick as a light. Awesome, awesome. Let's see what this coin is. Because I think um, everybody's waiting to see. Florin, 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 Florin. He's still running. <gasps> oh, no, it's not. <laughs> I was just picking it up as I had the camera held up at Dominic there. Never mind. Never mind. Oh, a 1922 one penny. Awesome. Awesome. 1922 full one penny. Go, dummy. They got uh, got cross country coming up at school soon, so maybe that's what he's practicing for. He's cross country, so really cool. Both very fit and athletic, my boys. It's uh, I wonder why they're always outdoors doing stuff. Not often you see them on the games. Nine laps. Yay! Ten laps. Well done. Absolute legend. Let's see what else we got. Oh, one right beside it. Are you right there? <laughs> you can have a break, Buster. Do nine. That means you would. That means nineteen laps you would have done. You couldn't do a hundred laps. You could. Is that what you're doing? A hundred laps? Ah, oh, you're incredible. Let's have a look. There he goes. He's off again. One lap. There he is. Up in the plug. Getting closer to the cricket pitch here too. Uh, I was going to say, I'd, I'd uh, expect this to be a coin. He's not though. He's an old merchant's bottle top lid. Into the pouch. Moving on to the next, once we find it, we'll clean this hole up too. You did not do 10. That was not 10 laps. I swear he only went back and forth like three times then. He's, uh, he's cheating, he's lying. 50, 50 now he's done. Tricking me again. Oh look, we found a switch. We better dig it. Right, we are gonna finish up. And uh, I tell you what. Yeah, this might be our last target, Dommy. We're gonna give him a dig. I'll grab the shovel. Dominic can't get it out of the ground, it's stuck. <laughs> stuck in the ground he's quite a big signal this guy and he was only giving one bar of depth a 25 he was uh, signaling at so who knows who knows I'm not even gonna guess this one uh, oh <laughs> oh what a ripper yes what a bloody ripper I should have tried to guess that one uh, 25 though and um, only one bar of depth it does make sense we've got a nice toy car that sun is back out now too, which is making me think we should do a little bit more detecting still. So awesome, awesome. I don't know what this guy is. He's got no chassis, no wheels, no axles, no nothing. He is completely broken. Even his roof is caved in. What an awesome piece though. Little toy car lost not far from the cricket pitch. Let's give him a bang out. Try and give me that dirt out. Whoops, oh no, we've lost his windshield. 
we've lost everything else that he had. Oh, his roof, I should say. The dirt was the dirt was the only thing holding him in. Let's see where his uh, windshield went. I don't know. Maybe he didn't have it in there. He must have just had he must have just had the roof there. So let's see what else we've uh, what else we can find uh, for another 10 minutes. We are going to flick the camera off now. Just do a really random, quick 10 minute hunt. And uh, fingers crossed. Whoop. Fingers crossed that way, not that way. Fingers crossed that we can find and snag that quick florin uh, before we get out of here. Uh, it's 1.38, so let's go till say two o'clock and uh, really try and hit on that florin. And I'm not gonna do any filming uh, until we find it, if we find it. Okay, so that is about it for us guys. Uh, we have been uh, detecting back and forth. Uh, it has just reached two o'clock now. So we are gonna get out of here as uh, as we mentioned. We've just been going back and forth though, uh, trying to hit on any more targets. And I'll tell you what, we did not hit the big florin that we wanted to. However, we did hit on a silver coin. And uh, I tell you what, I think there is even another coin still left in there. The pin pointer was sort of singing out there as I was retrieving this guy. So 1951, beautiful little wheat thrippence. And uh, we're gonna also check as I said what else is in that hole and when I was bringing that coin out uh, the pinpointer was sitting there still beeping away so I'm just uh, curious to see what else is there and I've lost him now we might need to go deeper oh no he was sitting on the side so there you go we've already had him out hence why oh awesome hence why the pinpointer was still going off look at that we also have a sixpence in the same hole a little thrippence and a little sixpence. He was ringing up at a 19 and a 20, so awesome, awesome. Let's put him above uh, the thrippence there and let's zoom you in so you can have a look together. 1943, beautiful sixpence uh, to finish us off for today, and a 1951, a little thrippence in incredible condition, too. So, tell you what, Zove, uh, you're in trouble, mate. That's another two silvers. Uh, into the tally for me. I may have bet you today. What do you reckon about that, Buster? Hmm? Don't care? You don't mind? All a bit of fun. Let's just check that hole. Because who knows? We might have had a third one to add into the tally. And it's not meant to be. That's it. That's all she wrote. So what do you reckon, boys? A great day out? Yep. Yeah. How, uh, how heavy is your bag, Zave? Eh? Got a few good coins in there? Yeah. Give us a jingle. That's not a jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic done it for you. Well done. Listen. Ho, ho, ho. Plenty of coins. All right. We're going to get home now and uh, we will clean up everything we've got, what I've got, what Zave's got, and uh, do a bit of a uh, conclusion at the end and show you exactly uh, what we've both got, what we've both found hunting here for today. What a ripper. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on a minute there, Buster. Before we get you home, uh, I cannot help myself. We all know what I'm like. Uh, I mean it, this is our last target. I just stood up though, and uh, in the same hole that we got the thrippence and the sixpence out, we seem to have another target. Isn't that awesome? Three coins to finish us off. Uh, it may not be a florin, but three silver coins is quite okay with me, and uh, hopefully might put us in the lead with Saviour. <laughs> it doesn't really matter anyway. Uh, you know, it's just a bit of friendly competition. I'm only just uh, shit staring him, so let's have a look what we got this time. It's going to be another silver. It's got to be. There he is there. A little thrippence. I've already thrown the other two in the bag. Ooh, quite an early one too. He does not match the last two that we found. I've already thrown the other two in the bag. But there we have it. Our last little coin. A 1934. A little Australian coat of arms. Thrippence. Yeah, another one in great condition too. And now, I mean it. Now we're heading home. Third silver in the bag. Uh, we better just check the hole just to make sure. I tell, I tell you what, and uh, we're going to fill it in, we're going to stand up, and we're going to detect over it too. Because uh, <laughs> I just said we were going home, getting out of here, and then uh, got another signal. I can't leave it, and uh, I can't miss it on camera, so we had to dig it. So, one more try, swing over the detector. I mean it, we're getting out of here then. Sounds pretty quiet to me. That's it, that's all she wrote. Three coins. What do you reckon, boys? Home time? Yeah, we'll see you there. 
Okay, so welcome back there guys. We've got you in the back room with all the finds laid out on the table here and I tell you what, it is really starting to fill up if some of you have seen the first hunt uh, where we just put them all here and uh, then we continued on with the second, the third and now we are running out of bench space. So I'll just give you a quick run through basically how we've started off at this site. Uh, for anybody that has not seen it, uh, basically this was round one. I'll just give you uh, a quick zoom in. All the pennies, all the silvers, uh, two wonderful old cap guns. Guns, uh, more pennies on that side and Xavier's collection of coins down below he did absolutely amazing as I said scoring that 1936 beautiful one florin two shillings so what a ripper and uh, all that in round one we only dug that much trash and not much at all uh, including the old engine valve I have no idea still what that's doing on the oval so round one with rubbish uh, round two, when I was sort of flying solo that day, we're going to do the same thing. We'll go in and uh, give you a look, share and show uh, what we found. We uh, hit on that 1942 Florin first up, which was quite nice, quite nice indeed. More pennies on that side. Uh, down below, we've got the junior school leader uh, captain's badge, or school leader badge. I keep calling it a captain's badge. And we also have uh, the beautiful World War I, uh, World War II Royal Artillery badge. Something I noticed too after filming there the other week, uh, the little wheel, wagon wheel in the middle has still turned. So quite incredible condition. So round two and um, round two's lot of rubbish uh, is right here. So not too much rubbish once again. I said we were flying solo that day. Uh, so we did dig a few more targets and uh, we did not capture as much on film. So round one with rubbish, round two uh, with the rubbish over here. And the last one uh, that we just finished off doing is round three and uh, sharing on video. So uh, the reality of metal detecting uh, that day was, and uh, what a ripper. We also hit on a 1942 Florin. Once again, our last coin for the day. Uh, funnily enough, uh, round two, we hit on a 1942 uh, Florin to uh, begin the day. So awesome stuff. Little Britannia half penny and the old handle down below. A few one and two cent coins and pennies there, as you can see. And uh, that is uh, the rubbish that we found for round three. Not too much at all. Uh, what I'm trying to say is a uh, trash to treasure ratio is just phenomenal at this site. So now let's get to what we did for round four. And uh, that was hunting there yesterday. It is the next day now. And uh, we'll take you through a look at what we've got. As I said too, I'll uh, just quickly say, uh, you know, throughout the last few videos, I've been saying we're going to keep a tally uh, round one, one, round two, round three, uh, round four. We're just going to keep a tally for about a month uh, and just see exactly how much we can pull out of this site and really hammer this site uh, while the grass is nice and short. So let's get back to this now and show you look what we got out. Uh, we've got the cool little uh, speed demon car there. What's left of him, uh, not too much at all. And next up we have all the pennies, a few 1942s, a heap of roo pennies coming out from this site, a heap of pennies in general. I'm going to do a count up, uh, which I have not done yet. Uh, but look, there's got to be there's got to be over 100 coins there by now. Well, over 100 coins. So a few more pennies. We also had a little Porsche, a 911 Hot Wheels from Mattel, 1974. What a ripper. Uh, we also had uh, the old tractor. Uh, this would have been like a two-piece uh, made tractor. And he is a Ferguson too. If you look up there very carefully, you can see Ferguson written in. So awesome stuff. As I said, it gives me memories of sitting on my grandfather's Fergie tractor and watching those wheels rip around underneath my bum. Just uh, lucky I never ever fell off the wheel guard, is it? Uh, none of us kids did, so thankfully. Anyway, moving forward up into the silver coins. So we got the shilling there first, followed by a heap of thrippences and a little sixpence. Just the one sixpence this time, a D for Denver once again, 1943, so he was supplemented and minted over in America during the World War II. And now Xavier's lot, uh, B-Boy, uh, he got stung by the bee, he's quite okay now, uh, but look, he did a fascinating job, absolutely amazing. So he's got a few nice a little half pennies there, Commonwealth of Australia, he's also got a full a Commonwealth of Australia penny on that side. Unfortunately, some of these coins he was finding along the trees there and were not coming out in the best condition. However, he did snag this beautiful, beautiful brooch. It looks like uh, grapes on a vine to me. And uh, it definitely looks like it's silver or at least a nice silver gilding on it. So let me put him down a little bit shaky and let me bring you right in. Isn't that just a cracker? A cracker piece so well done Xavier 
what a bloody legend. And then he walks over with a couple of little sixpences not too long after that, as you would have seen, a 38 and a 1942. So he has done an incredible job. And uh, I tell you what, it's a beautiful day again today. So uh, where do you think we are heading? We're going back out again for round five. And this time uh, we are going to uh, touch on the front of the school, uh, the untouched area. All this stuff here uh, has come from that back over there. So just quickly show you the trash too uh, that we dug. Uh, mine being on the left hand side and Xavier's on the right hand side. I am going to clean up this cap gun a little bit for him too uh, so he can put it on display. It is uh, quite broken. However, that's his first little cap gun so we'll clean him up and also display him for Xavier and uh, put all the rest of his relics uh, into the cabinet uh, as well as his beautiful florin and pennies up there so really hope you enjoy guys be sure to hit that like comment subscribe button below and uh, I hope to catch you uh, for round five hunting at this site and I really hope you've enjoyed our last two videos uh, the reality of metal detecting uh, showing everything coming out so awesome stuff happy hunting out there everybody and uh, hope to see you next time Cheers, and uh, we'll see you then.